when things are warmed up. <laughs> that first half, uh, as it was in his team, really exciting. You can see the fans really buying into what you're doing. But we all know that there's been a little bit of drop offs in these second halves. Is there any one reason for that? I don't think so. I think like when we've had the starts that we had in games, um, teams don't have a lot to lose when when they come out in the second half. So um, both times, teams threw a lot of men forward, um, really went a bit more aggressive on the press. And yeah, we didn't show our best and we probably didn't deal with them as well as we can. But that's football sometimes. We, we kept trying to do the right thing and... Um, the result didn't go our way in the second half out in Iceland, but I was proud of the team and the effort that they gave, and and we kept trying to do the right thing. And um, you know, you'd rather use these games to get uh, to get those experiences than when the qualifiers come around. Is there an element of the squad learning to adapt to a new manager, sort of new way of playing? It's going to take time, I guess. Yeah, of course. Um, like I think we probably set ourselves up really in the first game with how well it went and how well we played that all of a sudden the expectations are are sky high. So look every time a new manager comes in you have to you have to adapt and you have to try and learn as a group the way that um we, you know is expected for us to play and and I think we're really doing that. We're we're um, we're working hard in tough conditions and to you know the pitches were pretty tough uh, to play that nice style of football, but hopefully back at Cardiff City will um, give us a give us a good chance to do it right. Hopefully dry out and a little bit warmer on Monday night. Um, but Montenegro, although they're on a pretty poor run of form, they are going to be difficult to break down. Turkey took 70 minutes despite all the possession they had. That's an, another new challenge for you guys. Yeah, look, I think in the games that we've started so far, where we've gone ahead early it's uh, it does force teams to change so I'm assuming and expecting them to come out first and foremost to look to keep it tight try not to get off to a similar start like they did last time so yeah it'll be tough um, so you know Turkey are full of good attacking options and they found it difficult but we've worked hard this this short turnaround as a group to um, to be prepared and really go at them again this time Joe Allen training this morning. What's it like having him back around? Have you had to treat him like a new boy? Does he have to do the initiation all over again? No, I think Joe's paid his dues enough to uh, to not need to do any of that. It's um, you know, it's kind of felt like he hasn't been away. To be honest, it's, it's a, he's been a huge player for Wales and really vital in the success we've had in the past. So yeah, for for any team, we're delighted to have him back. He hasn't shied away coming back into the squad because we all know the experience, not just from minutes on the pitch, but environments and, and, and challenges he's got. Has he, has he put that influence out there straight away? Massively, I think. Um, you can just see his his day-to-day, -day, his work ethic, his habits on the pitch, the small details in training sessions. They... Um, they always seem to be doing the right thing and uh, the boys who are in the squad who have played with him and also the ones who haven't can only learn from him. Yeah. Any more questions? Hey Ben, just, just wondering how difficult it is, not, not just for you, but, but the, the, the entire squad. Player recovery, the challenging nature of that. You, you only got back late yesterday afternoon, late evening, uh, early evening, I beg your pardon. Plus the fact is, as is the want with international football, now everyone's got maybe the club minutes they would like. You've got to manage that physicality. How, how challenging, challenging is player recovery? Yeah, there's an element to it that's quite tough when you're travelling, but um, it's nothing new for us. I think everybody's uh, kind of got to deal with the same thing here, and that's one of the reasons why you pick a squad of 23 players, so that if, um, if necessary, you can make changes. And within this squad, we believe we've got talent across the board. And in terms of just the, the suspensions from, from, from Friday, I think it was five yellows overall, but two are, are going to hurt with two you know, young, real talented players in, in, in Brennan Johnson, Jordan James. Um, how, again, I suppose the players, when you're, when you're looking for a short turnaround, 
how difficult is it for plans to change? How adaptable you have to be because you've got two players that you just cannot use in whatever way that Craig wanted to use them. It goes back to what I said about having a having a squad of players that you really believe is here to contribute and you know, missing top quality players like Jordan and Brennan just means that it gives other players in this squad a chance to show them what they can do. Are you at all concerned about sort of two yellows in three games and maybe playing the playing the referees? There are referees that just sometimes give out cards very easily, very quickly for things that almost seem innocuous. That sort of craft of playing the referee. Um, I look, at, we're all aware that two yellows and three, well, two yellows at all is a quick turnaround to get a ban in uh, in this competition. But like the rules are the rules. Uh, we we were all aware of what they are. Whichever referee you get on a day is uh, is potluck in this competition. So there's uh, there's not too much conversation around that one. In terms of where the, the the group goes now, are you feeling the excitement? You know, e even from us in the, the, the in the, in this room where we're trying to be neutral, but there is an excitement. You can feel it from the supporters, the travelling supporters, the home supporters. Um, you call it the new manager bounce, whatever, but there is a dis there's a notable difference in in the, in the style and the energy as well. Three games in, I know it's not long, and you're only just preparing for the fourth one now. But as a senior player. How are you finding it? What's different? I think probably the biggest difference that we've seen is the style of play. We're, we're really trying to dominate the game with the ball and you know, we've shown over over time that we can be good without it, so it's maintaining those levels. But you've seen that um, in the games that we've played, we always, we've tried to start on the front foot, we've tried to dominate the ball and we've tried to create as many chances playing good football as we can. And um, yeah, look... There's that period of adaptation that uh, is expected, but the way these three games have gone so far, I think it's gone pretty well, and uh, we really feel as a group there's a lot more to come from us. Uh, just a, a follow-up on, on, the, on the Montenegro, and maybe we, you know, who knows how, how they will come out, but I think you alluded to the fact is that you feel certainly they'll be aware, aware in the first few minutes at, at least. Um, what if you get that scenario where you get the classic, the host, you know, Jose Mourinho, they park the bus? That mentality. Are you how prepared do you think you are with the game you want to play for a team that's going to come out and essentially be negative? I think it first of all probably shows a sign of respect to us if that's how they do come out and play and and show us that respect that they've that they can see that it's a challenge playing against us and maybe defence is their best uh, opportunity again. But look, maybe it's a bit unfair. They. Um, they definitely caused us a few problems in the second half out there. They they threw a lot of men forward and got some success with it. So we can't expect um, them just to sit in when you saw the problems that they caused us. So look, we're going into um, into this game focusing on ourselves. Uh, if they do play with a low block and it's quite defensive, then look, we'll have to move the ball quicker. We get the get our front boys on it as soon as we can, and hopefully they can create some magic. Last one for me, just a, a, another one on on Joe Allen. Listen, I imagine to have a player of his technical ability back in the squad is invaluable. But in terms of how he could, he could be used, do you get the sense that there is a possibility he could be in the match day squad, that he, he could do a half, 60 minutes from what you've seen just over the last week or so in camp? Yeah, knowing Joe and, and you know, having him back in is, is a huge boost for this squad. But uh, as a squad, we fully expect him to come here and contribute on the pitch and... Um, like it's not up to me how how many minutes that he does get or if he does at all, but we know we've got a quality player there, and uh, as a group, we're fully confident if we do get him back on the pitch, we'll have the proper Joe Allen playing for us. Okay. Yeah, hiya, Ben. Um, in terms of that turnaround and the tightness of it, do you guys prefer doing the home game first and then the away game, or is there a, is there a preference for the players in terms of recovery? Um. Look, I think it probably is easier if you play at home first because you take out that travel in between. Um, you know, take sorry, you take out that travel on on a so-called recovery day, which uh, that's my personal preference. But like I said, every team in this group is probably doing this turnaround at some point in it, so uh, it's not like it's a disadvantage or an advantage for any of us. Oh, well, well, obviously Iceland play two home games, don't they, in this one? So I was just wondering whether that that kind of affected things for you guys, you know. 
whatever Iceland have got going on, that's, uh, I guess that's their problem, not ours. Just have, all right. I uh, well, just wanted to touch on Harry Wilson because he's been absolutely exceptional for Wales and uh, kind of in and out uh, uh, club-wise. Have you seen him grow into his role with Wales and, and his sort of seniority within the group? Harry's shown time and time again for Wales um, like how good a player how, how good a player he is and you know he seems to produce moments of quality very regularly in a Welsh shirt so he's in that position now especially when we don't have someone like Gaz in the team where you know you're looking for goals from a lot of other players and I feel like we've had quite a lot of guys step up in that department now and uh, Harry's definitely at the forefront of that. And then just finally, you know, we talk about this high, high risk, high reward football. Uh, for you defenders, obviously, it's the high risk element of that. Um, how are you settling into it as, as in to a back four? Um, I think the, you know, the high risk is... It, that terminology can kind of assume that, like, we're not in control at times. And just because we're playing the ball, just because it's close to our goal, doesn't mean that we feel that we're taking big risks here. I think that... You know, the more we can have the ball, it means they don't have it. And if they want to come and push really high, it means there's a lot of space up front. And like I just said, we've got some top players up front who uh, who can cause problems for any team. So if um, if teams do want to let it go one v one at the back and push up on us, then it's up to us to try and get it up there, and then they can uh, cause as many problems as they want. Sorry, can I ask a quick one, Ben? Um, established football thinking over the years has seemed to suggest that. Um, if you've got a regular goalkeeper to play uh, in front of for you, um, that, that you can build up a rapport and an understanding and it helps in the long term. There's a chance tomorrow you could be playing in front of you could swap and change again. Does it matter? I mean, is that football thinking not relevant? I mean, does it still uh, matter that you've got a, a, an established number one or can you swap and change and still have no effect? From a personal level, I I look at the, the keepers that we've got here at Wales and I don't feel like it makes too much of a difference. I think we've seen it at Brighton as well this year. They're happy to chop and change when when needs be. So, yeah, from a personal point of view, no, I'm not uh, I'm not too bothered. I know that we work with the guys in training. When you do your run-throughs, everybody's working with everyone, and I feel like ultimately it's a squad game. So, yeah, I I feel lucky we've got two two, three, four even boys who don't make the squad in, in that GK position that are more than capable to step up and uh, come into the team. Oh, one more, Ben. Sorry. Hi, Ben. I just wonder, Hi. where do you sit on expectations? You mentioned earlier about them sort of being sky high now. I think Connor this time last year said, you know, it'd be naive to expect Wales to qualify for every tournament. Obviously, <coughs> the manager's been very bullish in, in his plans of 2026, 2028. How, how do you see it, Ben, as a, as a player and captain? I think expectations are are made off the back of what we've done in the past and you know there was a time when Wales didn't qualify for any major tournaments and we're probably going into campaigns expecting to get nowhere near it and you know as a group we've probably built that feeling around Welsh football that we are there and thereabouts and we can qualify with the quality we've got so that's an expectation that we've put on ourselves and We've done that by playing good football and and it's the expectations that we want. You know, we don't want to be coming here hoping we get a bit of luck to get to competitions. We want to push and we want to go and play at the at the highest level. We've had experiences in the Euros and in the World Cup and quite honestly we want more. Excellent, thank you everyone. Craig will be in shortly. Thank you guys.